listen to his perspective on how Internet of Things, you know, aids uh, behavioral change, you know, improves emotional well-being, you know, you know, and uh, his work with uh, life, life architect and life reading. <laughs> so uh, we look forward to speaking with you you know, learning from you and uh, looking forward to seeing how you want to open up the space for collaborations, you know, and perhaps how your work will penetrate uh, the Lagos market. So we, we're looking forward to a great session. Uh, if, without any ado, if uh, my partner doesn't have anything to say, we'll call Olu. Sami, any contributions or? Yeah, I just want to say welcome to Olu and we're uh, so glad to have you here. Thank you for showing up and uh, I mean, thank you. So we're looking forward to uh, receiving all that you have for us today in terms of uh, your experience, your knowledge, and uh, see how that can be of benefit to us. Okay, so thank you very much. And the floor is yours. Uh, pour all, everything you have out and we're ready here. We have the next uh, 20, 25 minutes. Yes, thank you, Sami. So, Lou, you have the next 20 to 25 minutes to, you know, let us into your world. Thank you. Olu, you are muted. So, you should unmute yourself from one of the devices. Okay, cool. Can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome. Thanks a lot for having me. Thanks for, you know, for the intro. Um, so, I'm trying to share my screen on you know, the presentation and it's saying hosts disabled attend attendee sharing screen sharing. Oh wait, uh let me make you co-host so that you can share your presentation. Okay. Great. You should have the ability now. Okay. So okay, I am guessing uh how's this gonna work? So so, or should I disconnect for my, uh, okay, oh. let's see. Let, wait, let, let's see if the, the laptop camera is good, you guys will decide, I will just shut the phone off. So let's see. Uh -huh. um, I think you have the ability now. Is this better? Oh, actually this yes, is good. It's okay. okay. So cool. I will disconnect from this, from the, the phone. Okay. Okay, so can you guys hear me? Yes. Perfect. Okay, awesome. Can I hear you? So I'm gonna no phone, no no headpiece. Just go for it. Awesome, perfect. Okay, let me share the screen right now. Let me know when you can see my screen. We can see perfectly. Let's see. Okay, again, thanks again for having me. My name is Olu. We're going to be talking today about data-driven behavioral change. Uh, the name of my company is called Life Rhythms, and we are a well-being optimization platform. So uh, a brief introduction about myself. I am a life coach and retired professional athlete. So basically, um, I help people with life, life, life management and um, lifestyle um, coaching to help them achieve their goals and improve their well-being. Um, I also used to be a professional athlete, cycling to be specific, you know, and I represented the country at the All African Games and in Mozambique. And I was also a uh, collegiate cyclist while I was in the university in the US. So a little bit about why uh, we believe uh, we, uh, well-being optimization is very, very important, right? So currently in the world, about 3.2 billion workers 3.2 billion workers, right, are increasingly unwell. And this is due to suboptimal lifestyle treatment. Right? So, Tell me your background. Noise is coming in. Yes, I can hear your background. Where is? Where does it come from? I'm thinking it's from Sammy. Let's see. Okay. Okay, I think it's muted now. So we're just gonna continue. Okay. okay. <laughs> so like I said, um, 3.2 billion people, are, you know, workers are basically increasingly unwell and this is due to suboptimal daily lifestyle habits. So I don't know if 
any of you are, is currently experiencing burnout or have any challenges with uh, um, mental health issues, but achieving optimal well-being, right, is a it's, it's kind of like an experience where so many components need to come into place, right? So you have your health, which obviously is connected to so many different activities like exercising, eating clean, sleeping enough, right? We have um, relationship aspect, obviously, which has to do with the kind of people you associate with, your families, your friends, and, you know, things like that. So basically, there's so many different components that is included in being well, right? Experiencing well-being, right? So as a result, many people find it challenging to do the activities that they need to do when they need to do it and for the right amount of, uh, of duration that's required for them to do it to really achieve, shall I say, what we like to call optimum well-being. Another challenge, right, is that um, seasons in life change, right? So things in life change. So for example, let's say you are a woman, right? You get married, you um, are expecting a baby, shortly the baby is out and they are twins. Now you have to deal with two kids that you were not dealing with before. So that would transform your lifestyle because of now you have responsibilities that you were not there before. And if you are not super aware of the components that you require for your well-being, things will get, things will get left undone. And as a result, you will start to experience suboptimal you know, um, well-being because of things are not aligned, right? So like I said, our, our, the problem we've identified is that people um, are suffering from these challenges. And obviously many of these things are felt in the workplace. So this is kind of like connected to employee well-being in some form. And our goal basically is to address this for you know, everyone that um, is seeking help. So the solution that we're providing is optimization for all facets of life. I'm sure you're aware of some solutions that just focus on maybe fitness. So maybe like Fitbit that measures sleep, measures um, your movement. You have different apps focusing on different aspects of, of, well, of well-being, right? But there is no solution that does everything, right? So we feel that, you know what, there's a space in the market for a player to come in and possibly bring all those solutions together to create one solution that enables people achieve all those things in aggregate, right? So our goal basically is to increase people's energy level, enable them achieve good health and fitness, and also enable them achieve optimal well-being. And there's a term we like to call this kind of people, right? This kind of people that have reached this state of peak performance, right? This this, this state of that you see them. They're always happy. They're always of high energy. You know, they're getting their work done. You know, it seems like they, are, they have endless energy. You know, we like to call them corporate athletes, right? So basically, we are saying that our solution, right, is to help you, a professional, become a corporate athlete. And this will enable you basically maximize performance both in work and life. So let me just talk about a little bit about the dimensions of well-being. Like I mentioned earlier, there are so many different components that, that, that is required to enable you to experience well-being, right? So there's the emotional, spiritual, social, occupational, financial, uh, physical, intellectual. There's so many of them. And if any of these components is lacking, you are not going to experience, you know, optimal well-being. So you can see where the challenges challenge lie. What are the things I need to do? When do I need to do them? How do I need to do them? So many things that needs to be done. And what we have done in um, Life Rhythms is actually create a framework that enable us to aggregate solutions from different players into one solution that enables you to monitor, track, and find ways to optimize um, your daily lifestyle to enable you achieve well-being in the long term. So this is the components of our, 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 our platform. So you can see there are actually three major components. We have the app, which we just actually launched in February. The beta version of the app, app was launched in February. And uh, the, uh, we're going to be launching the full version in August. And we have the community. And we have the, the coach, right? So I'm going to talk about the app later on, but let me focus on the community aspect and the coach, right? So 95%, there's a 95% improvement in goal achievement when you work with an accountability partner, right? It is proven that if you decide to go exercising or working out with a friend, right? 
you have a 95% chance of achieving your fitness goal because you have someone to keep you accountable. So when we're developing the system, we realize that it is going to be foolish for us to develop the system without enabling people to have some kind of accountability partner, right? So this community aspect of it, which is obviously still in development, would enable you share your lifestyle um, data with a close friend or a community of people. So your community can, can be your coworkers at work. Your community of people can be people with like um, like-minded goals, right? So, for example, maybe there's a community of pregnant women, and you want to see how um, how we can our pregnant women optimize their lifestyle, and you can join join that community. And obviously, they can be talking about how many hours of of sleep they get a night. We know there are different kind of cravings what they eat when they feel some kind of way, how do they handle um, emotional mood swings and stuff. The community aspect is basically to enable interactions and enable people to share their experiences so that everyone can basically achieve their goals. When the community is not good enough, or let's I say, when you, you can't really extract what you need from the community, that's where the coach comes in, right? So with the app, you can basically work with a coach, a trained coach, train about, um, train in, the life intelligence methodology which we created are ways to understand your lifestyle and enable you to fit whatever goal you're trying to achieve into the context of your current lifestyle in a balanced fashion so for example let's say you have a few, you you want to you have fitness goals right and you decide to hire a fitness coach right the sometimes but well, most times the coach would give you some kind of plan workout plan to enable you achieve your goals, right? But what we have realized is that many times that coach is not aware of your current lifestyles and your current lifestyle challenges and how many hours you sleep and many of those things. So sometimes that program that the coach gives you might not even enable you to achieve the goal because of there's no way within your current lifestyle and shall I say current responsibilities that would enable you to execute the plan that the coach has given you as it was designed. But with our system, the coach would have access to your lifestyle data and that way be able to modify your, um, shall I say, your training program based on your current lifestyle experiences. So that that way you can increase the possibilities of having your, uh, achieving your goals, right? So you can see how the platform works together to, to, to make these things happen. So let's talk about the app. Okay. So the app. It's called Lifely. So actually, I know um, um, a bit that me mentioned uh, Life Architect. So I'm sure you, I'm sure you're aware. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a tongue twister. So uh, we were asked by our investors and mentors to change the name. So we changed it to Lifely. So we're currently going through a rebranding process right now. So Lifely, L-I-F-E, L-I, basically. And the app is basically to simplify it is a time journal, a digital time journal. Enables you to track, to plan your day and track your day, uh, track your, your activities within the app. So you can see on the left side, there's the data aggregator. So currently right now it is called, it's, we're using manual data entry for the first version, for data the first version. In our next version, we're gonna have the automatic data aggregation, right? So basically you're gonna start aggregating data from wearables, from IoT, from sensors in the body and you know other ways we can collect data so we're going to be automatically aggregating that data so you don't necessarily need to basically put it in uh we're actually releasing a feature right now that enables you to aggregate data from google calendar into the app so basically all your planned events from google calendar goes into the app and you just check those activities as done within the app and that enables you to get the the lifestyle data that you need right so once you grab all the activities into the app, then the lifestyle data analytics system within the app provides you with actionable insights of your current lifestyle. You know, so for example, how many hours are you sleeping? How many hours are you exercising? If you're exercising at all, how many hours are you basically spending on spiritual activities, on relationships, on commuting, on errands, basically everything, right? So we came up with a 10, 10 categorization system for all of life activities so it enables the system understand your lifestyle right and we also have like i said um, um different features that enables you to track your habits you track your and um, know your activity count and different stuff 
the most important thing within the app is the feature called the life score. So the life score provides, it's, it's a, actually a work-life balance rating, right? Based on the duration and kind of activities you perform each week. So it gives you a score on, the, from a, on a scale of zero to 100, right? Where the score 85 above is excellent, right? And with that, you know that you were able to do different kinds of activities, the right activities required for well-being, right? This I'm going to mention them. The major five activities that requires for well-being on a lifestyle standpoint is uh, sleep, right? Spiritual activities, exercising, self-care, and relationship. So basically, this the algorithm within the life score checks to see how many of those activities you're doing, right? The kind, the time, and gives you a score based on the overall balance. So let's talk about is a case study. So this is Jennifer, and she started using the app. The first um, um, week she used the app, her life score was in the 50s. And based on our rating system, 50s is actually the low, is very low. It is very, very poor. That's a poor life score in regards to balance. Back then, she was not exercising. She was not doing any um, spiritual activities. She was working 70 to 80 hours a week. She basically spent a lot of time on self-care. So basically got home, was watching Netflix and things like that. And what we now started doing is that we started to understand, right? So with the help of obviously the community and myself being the coach, we started helping her to figure out ways to add some of these those activities that she was going to require for, for balance. So, oh, Jennifer, you need to sleep more. Jennifer, you need to start exercising. Jennifer, you need to spend some time on some kind of spiritual activities. Jennifer, you need to spend more time with your family and friends. I know it's, uh, we are currently in quarantine, but you can call people, FaceTime them and stuff. You know, Jennifer, you need to ensure that the quality of your self-care activities is actually I, not just you sitting down and watching Netflix, you know. And over a period of time, you could see that she was able to increase her life score and maintain that life score in a very, very um, high range. So you can see from between week 10 to week 17, the score, the average score was much higher than the previous weeks that she was using the app. So just like a weight scale, right? Once you can understand on a weight scale, right? And you see the weight, it gives you, it informs you about your current situation and that influences your decision making. So basically this cause over the period of weeks made her become aware of her lifestyle choices, right? And enable her to modify them, you know, however fit, right? To enable her to achieve better balance and obviously experience what we like to call optimum well-being. So um, I'm going to actually um, do, do this. I'm, I'm going to do a live demo just so you can see the app in real time. Um, and like I said, the app, the goal of the app is to enable you to understand your lifestyle, which is basically your habits, your rituals, your routines. And like I say, said before, it's like a digital time journal that enables you to time block and time track within the app. And like I also mentioned in the previous slide, the goal is basically for us to get you to a life score of 85 and above for at least four consecutive weeks. Why four consecutive weeks? Four consecutive weeks because once you are able to maintain it on that high level, it means that you have already started to make those necessary lifestyle changes. It's not a fluke. It's not like a, a week where good things just happen. No, it shows that you actually took specific steps in your lifestyle to ensure that you add balance. And that happened for about 30 days or more because, I bet, because it takes about uh, an average of 66 days to build, build habits. But we've realized that those that are able to have this score consecutively for four weeks tend to have achieved some kind of, 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 of um, uh, shall I say, well-being optimization, right? So afterwards, the goal is now basically picking goals of things you want to improve on and basically adding the activities required for you to achieve those goals into your current lifestyle and make them an habit. An habit. So basically, no goal requires you to do an activity once, right? Most goals require you to do an activity multiple times before that um, goal, goal, goal gets achieved, yeah. So I don't know how I'm doing on time, Bami Dele. Can I do a quick demo? Can anyone tell me I'm doing on time before I move to the demo? We are, we are on time. You can, I, I really want to okay. see. Okay, cool. 
So, okay, let, let me just um, round up the slide real fast in case we don't have time to come back in case the demo goes long and you guys have questions during the demo. So, what are basically the opportunities right now available within, within that we're basically exploring is we are looking for content and edit editors, right? So, there's a need for the community to have content to keep, to be, keep, to be engaged. So, we need some kind of content editor, content writers to be you know part of the organization so that we can start providing people with content meaningful content in regards to different aspects of their life so financial content right exercise content you know spiritual activity content so sometimes what people what happens is that people pick an, an, a goal or an activity that's not necessarily suited to them so if they have the appropriate content they can try multiple activities activities until they figure out which one is best for their lifestyle Another thing is that we are looking to partner with therapists and coaches. Like I showed you within the platform, coaches is a big aspect of this solution, right? Because of no one can do it all alone, right? You need professional help sometimes. So we're trying to get coaches on board and train them in the methodology of well-being optimization, right? Enable them to understand what an optimized lifestyle looks like, what are the components of it. So whenever they are training you in whatever specific goal it is, they are mindful of this balance, right? So the coaching program should not throw your balance off, right? Your coaching program should enhance the balance and the goals you achieve. And lastly, basically, we're looking for a team. We're trying to build a team. We need developers. We need uh, social media folks. We need you know, different people to join the team. Again, we're looking for mentors and advisors. We have a long journey ahead. We have achieved awesome milestones. Like I said, the app is out. We're generating revenue. Uh, we we, we uh, have good numbers in regards to traction and improvement of people using the solution. But you know, we need mentors, advisors, and also investors. So basically, that's that. The call to action is the app. We'll provide the links to you and also the, the, the community so you can join. But let's go on to, uh, um, let's proceed with the demo. So uh, the demo basically is going to happen on the phone. So I don't know, is there a way for you to, I'm going to co connect back with my phone so that um, you can make the phone account the dominant account. Okay. And um, I can share that screen there. Oh, there is someone who's asking, uh, can you screen share that again? That's what you mean. So I'll sell it again. Okay, should be better now. Yeah, there's someone who's asking if you can share. I think your last screen. Okay. So maybe they can they can have more time to. Okay. Is that what you mean, guys? Otherwise, we can share the links with everyone here yeah. on the. Basically, basically the um. Uh -oh. Basically the. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see Jen, Jen's life scores. Okay, that's not the wrong. So let me, let me do that again. So share screen, then, okay. I shared the wrong, okay, so this is it. But I would, um, we're gonna make the, the. Okay, so that's it. What? Uh, okay, can you please stop sharing your screen? Thank you. Let's, let's, okay. let her, oh, so we have some, yeah, those are people that joined to just do that. So we have to, let, yeah, let, let, me, let me just um, disable that ability okay. and, and we can go on. It seems like we're about to get hacked. <laughs> yeah, wait, let me just remove these people. Uh, Yeah, this happens sometimes. Is it, you know, that the security from Zoom is, it's quite bad. Yeah, I know they're improving. They're doing a good job there. <laughs> okay, one sec. Okay, I think now is the time. Okay, so I'm, um, so I'm gonna um, disconnect from the computer so you don't, if you, if you don't have a difficulty figuring out which one is the one you should. I can't share the screen again. So can I give this account the, the word they call it here. So can I, can I convert 
um, the post to this account so that mm -hmm. I can yeah, yeah share, share my phone screen. Mm. Thank you very okay. much. You okay. Can. Yeah, so sorry that we are having to do, do it this way. So um, let me know if you can see my phone screen. Can I see my phone screen? Okay, so this is my phone screen and like I told you, the name is still called Life Kitat. So can, can, are you in the app now? Can you see the app screen? I can see your uh, calendar. Okay, awesome. So like I said, the app basically works like a digital time journal. So basically this is what I did from 12 a.m. this morning to, and I'm gonna slow down slowly, how long I slept, what I did as soon as I woke up, uh, you know, and what is going on to your current time. So the light events, the events that are light are basically events that are happening or yet to happen. And the ones that are darkened, which are on top, are the ones that are done. So I can basically take you to the previous day or what I did in the previous day is all tracked into the system, right? Let, let me know if I'm going too fast and if the screen is moving, like you know, it's breaking and stuff, right? So everything I did for as long as I've been using the app is tracked there. So this is the only way we can understand your current lifestyle. And this is the only way the app can help provide you with lifestyle optimization challenge and um, things. So there are different colors for different kinds of activities. So if I go, for example, want to add a new event, I say plus, it shows me the 10 categorizations. So basically we have categorizations for different kinds of activities. So it took us actually a couple of years to figure out how we could narrow all the activities that we perform into 10 categories. And no matter what it is you perform, it falls under one of those 10. So basically what you do is say, okay, for example, I'm watching Netflix. For example, you go to self-care and you can see different things. Leisure is what we used to track, um, leisure activities. So you just press leisure and you can just add the description and save. So let's say I was watching Netflix. I just type in Netflix and let's say I want to track also um, what I was watching. So let's say I was watching Iron Man, for example, and you just type that in and you pick the, the time, time range. So actually we track in um, 30, um, 15 minutes increments. So let's say I just watch that for 15 minutes and I just basically save and that gets saved into the system. So super, super easy. It takes at, um, about uh, 50, less than 50 seconds to actually create an entry and it's on the system, right? So let me show you the inside screen. So this is where a lot of the magic happens. This is where the, the, the data analytics, lifestyle data analytics basically crunch the addition of all the activities you performed. So like I said, this is all my activities this week. A number of hours I've slept, number of hours I spent on spiritual activities, number of hours I spent working, number of hours I spent exercising, everything is here, right? And we can also track the habits like in the other screens I showed you, how many activities you're doing per day, how many activities you know, um, you're, do, you're doing per week, average number of activities per day, and also the habits, right? What days are you doing, what activities, so that way you're trying not to break the chain and build those sustainable habits and stuff. The life score is here, but the life score comes out only after you have completely tracked for a week. So we use this space to also enable you track your progress towards achieving, seeing your life score at the end of the week, right? So I'm just gonna show you the last, my life score for last week since this week is not completed yet. So I'm gonna go here and select last week and it's gonna show you my life score. So I had an excellent life score last week, which was 96. And as you can see, I had a good amount of well, wellness. Wellness is basically a combination of physical and um, exercise and spiritual activities. Productivity is a combination of work and business, career development and personal development, right? And unpaid at the bottom is a combination of travel and errand hours. So this way it enables us basically to group activities based on similarities and provide you with a score. And this is the, the uh, what I call it for the score, the rating system. Excellent if it's above 85, good between um, 84 and 75, average between 74 and 65, and below 65 basically is fair. But the whole idea basically is to get you within this balance range. And I can show you my life score for the previous week was 93. And the week before that 
was 80. Yeah, so it actually, it actually dipped a little bit. But you can see I worked longer hours. I had less wellness activities performed. I had more self-care for less relationships. So you can see it's very, it takes into account the balance and enables you to achieve, achieve balance and stuff. So let me take you to the goal section. So this is where after you have definitely achieved your goals, uh, your, your, your balance, then you want to start adding goals or tracking goals. So the goals basically enables you to allocate a, a specific amount of time to different activities. So you can see work and business, the, the target is meant to be 30 hours for the week, but so far so good, I've done 38 hours. For educate, uh, it's meant to be 30 hours for the week. I'm going through the Founders Institute program at the moment. But this week so far, I've done only 11 hours, 15 minutes. Learn is basically when I do listen to audiobooks. I've done seven hours for five minutes so far. And you can see sleep, connect. Connect is obviously relation time, time with friends and family relationships. You can see run. You can see devotion, which is a spiritual activity. You can see leisure, which is basically watching Netflix and, and relaxing. So basically, I have different goals. Some goals have been achieved. Some goals I still have the rest of today and the rest of tomorrow to try to achieve those goals. So basically, that's the app in summary. And okay, so like now, this is actually a good thing. So after you have actually completed some of the activities, you get a notification bar at the top right corner. If you click on that and you go to the notification section, it asks you if you completed these activities. You swipe left for no and right for yes. So once you swipe right, it says the activity has been successfully tracked. And once you go back to the main screen, you will see that the activity that was once a, a, a light activity is now dark, meaning that it was, it was done. So it's also a way to help you stay accountable. So the app basically, like I said, it makes you intentional because of now you're planning your activities. It makes you to be accountable to yourself. It enables you to self-reflect on you know, your lifestyle and the activities you're doing. And it enables you to um, figure out ways to improve going forward. So this is the last call for that week. So I'm going to keep, stop sharing my screen. If I have any questions, I, I don't know. Do we still have time for questions? Or what, yeah, we, we what, have time and we already have some questions. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yes. So shoot, shoot the questions and I will, I'll, 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 I'll put the links. I'll put the link in the, what do I call it? I'll put the link in the, the links in the communication box so you can download the app. If you are using the iPhone, you will need to download the test flight first because it's in beta. And uh, Android is also available for Android also. And uh, that's that. So please, questions. Okay, thank you for your session. That was really brilliant. Really appreciate your time. That was fantastic. Uh, you are doing a great job. Um, we have a couple of questions. I also have some questions, so, but I think we should take the, the questions from uh, the, the chat room first. So, uh, Paola is asking a question that, um, what's your business model? And then okay. how do you measure well-being? And uh, also, if you want to take it together, and then who is the data of the... Uh, uh, everything you got, how, how do you share it? Who do you share it with and all that? Okay. I think it, it boils down to accountability. And all okay, okay, let me answer those questions first. Okay, first question, um, business model. So basically, uh, we are operating a, a SaaS model. So we are actually gonna be launching this app as an employee wellbeing solution. So a B2B2C where organizations pay, you know, organizations pay um, for the solutions for employees to make use of it. So that, that's the business model. Um, there are going to be different pricing tiers. So pricing tiers for teams lower than 100. And there's going to be a pricing tier for team above 100 and a different pricing tier for teams above 1,000, right? The teams that are above 100 would have a dashboard. The HR department will have a dashboard to further understand the well-being of the, of the employees in aggregate, right? So they're going to understand it in aggregate. And basically, this enables um, organizations to now better, should I say, pick employee well, well-being solutions for the employees based on the data they are seeing. So, for example, let's say they realize that the average amount of sleep for the employees uh, in a particular month was four hours. That's My name is Nick. 
So basically, um, the the I like uh, that nigga dick. Shut up. The uh, fuck that's so gay. So uh, I think um, yeah 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 yeah. That is crazy. Um, so uh, I think um, Paula, you might need to um, take yeah. over the host again so you can. Yeah, I, remove I, I removed him. The, the, yeah, I don't I, know what happens with this. I think many people yeah. really need your app. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think I think you can lock the room too in case just since we're rounding up. Yeah. Okay. So the um, the organization, for example, let's say the organization realized that sleep hours for the employees were, was low at a particular time, right? What would happen then is that. The organization can now say, okay, since sleep is low, let's hire a sleep coach for the company to help people, you know, move their lifestyle around to obviously get more sleep in and stuff. So that's an example of how that would work. For since we already have B2C users at the moment, we're going to basically keep that model going. So if individuals who are not part of organizations want to use the app, they can also basically use the app individually. Yeah. So that's the business model. I'm trying to remember the second question. Second question was what again? Mm -hmm. It was about how do you measure well-being? Okay, how do we measure? Okay, them, do we measure yeah, I wanted okay, to know okay, how to okay, let, So basically, what we did is that we took research insights, right? So basically, uh, we know that they say for sleep, sleep researchers say an average should be sleeping six to eight hours a week, right? Exercise, um, fitness folks tell us would say you need to be exercising 30 to 60 minutes, uh, three to five times a, a, a week, you know. So we have research for the different aspects, right? Like I said, well-being is a combination of things, but we have an idea what the ideal for the average person is for those different things. So what we did is now took all those ideals and put it within the algorithm. So basically the algorithm is checking what you're doing in different areas and summing everything together and giving you a score based on that. So that's how basically we measure well-being, yeah. Then the last question from you, I think there's another question. What was the last one? Um, Bidemi, please help me with that. You're on mute. Yeah, one sec. Mm. Okay. Bidemi, yeah, you can. Yeah, the question is, uh, who is the data shared with? Okay, okay. So right now, data is not shared with anyone. We are keeping the data well, we are um that's why we want people to pay for the solution so we don't need to use the data to advertise mm -hmm. so because at the end of the day this is very very sensitive personal information right also even within our platform the data has been anonymized so if we let's say get act people can't connect the data to each individual person also there's a different layer layers of the data that we do keep so for example, we only keep data connected to the categorization systems. We don't keep any other data out um, aside that. So for example, um, the 10 categories I displayed is something that obviously we track. The subcategories under each of the 10 is things that we track. Everything else you put aside that is not, is not tracked. So for example, let's say your data gets out there. All people might know is, oh, you slept and what day? They don't know. Uh, for example, oh, you, okay, let me, sleep is a, is a bad example. Let's say, for example, now they say um, the data that was compromised is your relationship data, right? They can say connect, that yes, we are connecting with someone, but they don't know who you are connecting with, they don't know where you are connecting with, and they don't know any other thing. So it's just two of those elements that is tracked. The other details, we don't track them, so that way, you know, we don't have issues with data. But we don't sell data, we don't ever plan to sell data. We believe that um, these informations are sensitive, so we are going to monetize by getting people to pay for the solution so we don't need to um, sell data to make money. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes, thank you very much. Good answer. Um, since your felt is asking uh, about two questions, that are you going to consider mental health as a component of health, health reading? Things to practice, perhaps, perhaps mental health, I don't know. Um, so, so um, basically, well-being is everything. So well-being is mental, it's physical health, you know, it's everything. So definitely mental health is part of it, right? Um, the reason why a lot of people experience um, burnout. So like everything in life is connected, right? And most times people experience burnout, which is basically energy exhaustion, right? And as a result, 
they become less efficient in regards to the selection of, of activities. So basically, should I say, decision-making, lifestyle decision-making becomes compromised when someone is experiencing burnout or when someone is exhausted, right? So basically, the person starts to do activities that we call basically the lowest hanging fruit, right? So it's when, when, when you're exhausted, your willpower is low. As a result, you're doing activities that mm, maybe you should not be doing. So if you have negative habits, you know, you might be smoking more, you might be drinking more, you know, you might be doing many of those activities that you know you should not be doing. But you can't resist them because of will, your willpower is low. So basically, what happens as a result of, of exhaustion or burnout is that once your decision making becomes compromised, then that makes you start to do things that you should not necessarily do. And as a result, there are, should I say, physical um, issues that spring, spring up as a result of that. There's medical things that spring up because of that. You know, if you don't sleep well, you know, you might be driving and you might get involved in an accident after the accident. You know, you are going through some kind of pain so you can't move around and do exercise and everything is connected. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. So this basically covers yeah. everything. And like I said, what we just really, really need to do is actually start to aggregate data from different places. You know, so sensors, um, brainwave, everything. Because, because the more data we can aggregate and enable you to, shall I say, get better actionable insights based on those data, the better your decision making would be, and the better you'll be able to find balance and achieve optimal well being. Yeah. I don't know if I answered that question. Another totally. question. Okay, sure, please. Yes. Uh, the other, there's another question from uh, Cynthia, same Cynthia. What is the model for partnership with other companies that have content you want to incorporate? Okay, so on the content side, um, partnership with other companies. We're trying to figure out what we can and we can't do. I know um, you can always grab li um, lifestyle content from different platforms and source them within your platform and stuff. What we actually want to build within the content aspect is actually a content aggregator, right? So right now the app is a lifestyle data aggregator. So right now we don't, we don't believe in basically building anything from scratch. We believe everything that needs to be built is already being built already. So why don't you just, you know, aggregate and basically um, provi um, so provide the source in whatever we're using and maybe some kind of compensation for using it. So actually, we would love to have someone who is very good in content um, um, strategy or management and development that can enable us to aggregate data so that people, once, for example, now you get your life score, and we know that your life score is low due to fitness, right? We can help you now provide you with the right kind of fitness content, right? Where you need it in the right level and the right stages. So for example, now for fitness, since I'm, I'm, since I'm a pro cyclist, a lot of people say, if you want to start doing fitness, the first thing you should work on is your core. So because of once your core is strong, that eliminates lower back pains going forward and things like that. So if someone it has a life score that is low and fitness is low. We'll say, okay, you need to increase your fitness up. We provide them with mindset shifting content to enable them to start to understand the importance of um, exercising. Then afterwards, when the person is ready to exercise, we now start providing them with content in regards to building the core because we believe the core is first, then start moving on to other things as they start to develop that lifestyle. You know, So it's, it's, there's a very methodology, um, there's a very methodological way things are done at Life Rhythms. And, um, you know, we have the framework. It works. It's just a matter of how we plug all those components to enable people maximize, optimize their well-being. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. That was a good response. Uh, question from Remy. He says, how do you remember to put, put in data during the day? <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a good question. So um, we, we, have in, um, we, we have a Google Calendar integration that's actually coming out our next release in the next couple of days actually so what happens is that a lot of professionals have events on their google calendar already right those events will get aggregated into into the app and what happens is that the app now reminds you so your google calendar or the app will remind you about those activities so you do them and you just check them as done so you get a notification saying did you do this activity once you tap on it and you say done basically that is done what also happens is that you, you can um, create recurring events within the, the system, right? So that that way, it knows that, oh, your sleep usually happens from, let's say, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. 
So that is kind of like a recurring, the, the system knows that this is when you usually sleep, right? So in the morning, it asks you, did you sleep from this time to this time, right? If the answer is yes, then you, you say yes and it's done, it's added. If you say no, then it asks you, when did you sleep and stop? Obviously, many people have fitness apps and stuff and trackers. So sleep basically would eventually start getting aggregated from many of these devices. And basically, you would basically not need to do anything. Yeah. Any um, other question? Rem is also asking another question. That, okay, I sure. mean, why, <laughs> why did you choose these categories based on what? Okay, I mean, so basically. That, before you, you, you comment, I want to add to that. You okay, know, right. because um, people have different lifestyles in terms of their different phases of their lives. Some are CEOs, some are employees, you know, uh, as the case may be, some are athletes, and they don't necessarily have the same uh, patterns of life. So how do you, you, do you have a plan to develop um, separate, you know, activity trackers for different kinds of people? so okay. that you can easily you know for instance the, the way i sleep is different the time i wake up yeah yeah and the okay number of hours i sleep and all this kind of thing okay cool awesome awesome that's a good question so let me, let me answer the first one first okay so we actually spent about four years we've been working on this for four years now and uh, we had different test groups where we brought people in and we asked them to list out 50 plus activities they do you know in their day-to-day -day, right then we basically arranged, categorized similar activities based on the goals or, or the benefits of those activities, right? So um, relationship, um, for, so on our relationship, for example, we have connect, basically time spent with friends and family, love, time spent with a significant other, right? Um, we have pets, time spent with your pets, you know, and nurture, time spent with your kids. So basically, whatever activity it is, we did a good job in researching and understanding how we can put similar activities together into category system and stuff like that. Yes, we are still looking, we are still, or we are always researching. So once we see opportunities to move things around, we do, but we have a very good system. I'm sure if you download the app, which I actually placed the link to the app in the chat, chat whatever, you will see that we actually did a lot of work on that end. Um, uh, Bidemi's question. So actually what we're doing within the system is actually enable people to achieve three things. Life management, time management, and energy management. Those are the three things that the platform is enabling you to achieve. And I'm sure people that struggle with time management uh, would say that it's difficult to find a solution to help them address that, right? So what we have realized is that you can't necessarily achieve good time management without achieving life management and energy management, right? So basically, if you don't sleep well and you don't get enough rest and you don't recover well, your performance will reduce over time and that affects your productivity, the time management, right? If you are not mindful of the season, so in life management, we like to say there are seasons in life, right? The season where the you know, number one goal maybe might be earning money, a season where your number one goal might be your family, you need to understand the seasons I need to prioritize your activities for those seasons. So we did our system, enables you to, and this is where the community comes in, and this is where the coach, the coach aspect comes in, enables you to identify what are the key important things within those seasons and how you can prioritize to move things around. While you're using the app, you will start to understand what you need in various areas. Sleep, you know, the, um, exercising and stuff, and that way you can allocate things around. So for example, even if you are working 10 to 12 hours a day, you have, let's say, let's even say 12 hours a day, you have an extra 12 hours that if you use it appropriately, you are not going to burn out with the 12 hours. So it's like, that's why I say we, you need to have a athlete mentality, corporate athlete mentality, right? If you're going to be working 12 hours, you are not a, you're not a regular professional anymore. You are now a pro, a, a, like a pro athlete. So you can't live your life, you know, in, in, you know, mindlessly, you have to live it mindfully to ensure that you are recovering. Because at, at the end of the day, everything is all about the work and the recovery process, right? Just like going to the gym. You exercise, but you need days to recover. And if that formula between rest and recovery is broken, it's not, it's not optimized, then you're going to experience burnout. But if you can find a way to optimize those work and rest cycles, 
regardless of what activities they are performing, then you will experience what we like to call peak performance. So it's just understanding this is the, work, the level of the work stress. This is the level of recovery that I require. How can I ensure that as this is happening, I'm not sacrificing this. The recovery is very, very important. Yeah. So I hope I answered your question. Yeah, Thank you very much. That was a good response. Um, awesome. Remy is asking another question. That was the most important ingredient for energy level. Okay. So for energy, obviously, we need to be mindful about um, the happy chemicals. So dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, you know, and um, what, which one am I missing? Serotonin. Yeah. So many energy comes to the body in several different ways obviously resting sleeping obviously provides us in to renew your energy eating obviously food nutrition and all those kind of stuff they are a combination of things you know so at the end of the day what you need to figure out is how can you ensure you are doing the right kind of activities aside eating clean and sleeping you know and exercising and sure that whatever activities you are doing it is the activities that enables you to release the most amount of those happy chemicals because of you're, so you're going to get a, a better, you're going to get a, a bigger, better, shall I say, um, energy from them. So for example, now I'm a cyclist by profession. I did a, a, so many years cycling, but I also enjoy running. The levels of endorphins that's released when I cycle, especially when I'm in California and I'm in, in cycling in a beautiful scenery and stuff, just that, that feel good feeling and everything. It releases more energy than when I'm running, you know. So at the end of the day, I try to prioritize cycling activities over running because of, for me, it enables me to release, it helps me release those happy chemicals in a larger amount than running does. And like you said, like I said, BDME, everyone is different. So you need to figure out what kind of activities work for you. But regardless of those activities, we have organized them in those right categories that as long as you are spending meaningful amount of time in them, right? You will get those benefits. Another reason why we want to connect sensors, right? That's why a lot of the TT and uh, transformative tech sensor companies and stuff will be big partners with us in the future is that right now we're just measuring time allocation, right? Just the quantity. We're not measuring, let's just really measuring the quality, right? So with sensors plugged into our system, right? And everything we're doing, we are basically calling it life intelligence, right? So like artificial intelligence, life intelligence is what we are basically is the core of our, our, our platform, right? So what happens is that when we start to connect the quantity and the, the quality of activities via the quantity and the quantity is going to be, the quality, sorry, the quality is going to be measured via the sensors and stuff, then we can enable people to really, really quickly identify the activities that's working for them and how they can make sure they prioritize activities within their schedule to ensure that the work rest cycles is optimized for peak performance. Yeah. So. Fantastic. Uh, I think the last question from the chat room is also showing something regarding what you just okay. mentioned. Okay. Neural right yeah. Neurotransmitters. How do we measure? So right now we don't measure it, right? And um, uh, like I said, it's something that we're gonna when we partner with um, you know um, other TT companies that we would start to figure out ways to measure it, you know? So we, we want to be, our goal basically is to be the number one platform for lifestyle data analytics, right? Apple, Google, and many of the big fives are working on, um, on the uh, other aspect in regards to the medical care, right? What is happening in regards to the sensing on the data. We want to focus on the activities, right? The decision side of things. We want to focus on the behavioral change aspect of it. Why do people do the things that they do? What are the benefits of those activities? Why do people do them? Why do people not do them? All those kind of things. So we want to be the leader when it comes to lifestyle data analytics, right? And we, we, we believe that um, once we have a good amount, so right now currently we have about 70,000 hours, 70,000 hours of lifestyle activity data aggregated by people using the platform. And that is going to keep growing. Eventually, we're going to start working with psychologists, you know, neuro, neuro, neuroscientists and the rest to understand those data. And eventually, we're going to get some of our users to start using some of those brainwave sensors, those um, um, heart rate variability sensors and stuff. So we can now start pairing those data from those sensors with data from um, the activity data and now start having more in-depth um, understanding of what's going on and stuff like that. So we have a should I say a long-term vision 
that spans 10 years that gets us to play in multiple industries to enable people basically achieve their goals. And like I said, our vision is to simplify the complexities of living. And we believe that the more we can help people optimize their lifestyle and make better daily decisions, the more we can enable people, um, shall I say, um, experience optimal well-being and shall I say, end unnecessary human suffering. Yeah. So. Thank you very much. Thank for, for you. Time. Yeah. I'm actually not sure, um, just bringing this back, if there is a non-invasive way to measure neurotransmitter levels. Uh, I, I am not aware of it. Uh, actually, uh, if anyone has an answer to that question, I would love to know. And I'm um, like, funny enough, my next book I'm reading, I'm currently reading um, Life 3.0. It's a book about how AI is changing the world. Next book I'm going to read in is... Um, 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 health, health habits it's all about those neurotransmitters and stuff i'm trying to connect more with professionals in the space who are working on this neurotransmitters to see how we can possibly uh, measure it because if we can measure that's going to be very very huge you know now we measure steps we measure calories and stuff but measuring that that's going to be a big um, game changer so if you guys know anyone yeah. please let me know we would love to work <laughs> with them I think you have a challenge, an interesting challenge there. Yeah, we know we um, but do, we do. yeah, anyways, if you don't measure them directly, um, you know, there must be ways to measure yeah. at least how the effect they have in your habits and your yeah, general yeah. well-being. So that was an excellent, excellent presentation. All of thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, please. We didn't yes. your host. Yeah, um, I, I want you to talk about reward system. I think um, okay. there's a huge market in that aspect. Um, you know, you know when you generate um, scores, you know, for instance, how do you get rewarded for meeting your target last week? Okay. You, you scored okay. about 90%. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, okay. you know, that's okay. something that is very crucial. You know, okay. if you meet your target, how do you get rewarded? You know, okay. there's a, a huge opportunity in that area. How do you, yeah. do you bring in? Uh, okay, so 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 you're talking about um, token economy. You're talking about um, badges and reward system and stuff like that. Yes. So actually, we are actually going to build that into the community. So we have started. We are, we have started building the community already. So as you can see, this is life. Life is challenging. It has a lot of parts. But I spent a lot of years researching and implementing what we, have, what, what we have learned from our research, right? And the app was the first goal, which is out now. And listen, the next goal is now building the community and enabling, building a community that enables people to help each other out in a way that is engaging. Because at the end of the day, you can see any kind of improvement is super challenging. You know, even trying to achieve one goal is, is difficult. Imagine trying to achieve multiple goals and stuff like that. Yeah. So what we are doing is within the community, we are going to track um, um, the last calls in aggregate. You can see last calls for different months, right? Or so different weeks. And we are going to also give um, targets for different kinds of activities. So maybe, for example, sleep, how many hours of sleep you did, how many hours of um, exercise you did, how many hours of those kind of stuff. So with all those things, we will now basically create badges and points. So for example, let's say you exercise, um, um, are you able to exercise five times a week Right, you get badges, and you obviously build um, points where we streaks, streak, streaks. You can actually actually points saying that you do not you do not break the cycle. It's something that we're doing regularly, regularly, regularly. So all those um, points and badges are going to be imputed in the community to enable you obviously stay motivated as an individual, but also enable the group to compete against themselves. And if eventually, we're actually going to try to figure out ways to actually tie in prices to it. So if I achieve some goals, you get prices. Especially within the organizations, we try to see how the organizations, human resources can put some prices for people to win based on whatever they achieve. And also, we're also going to put those um, maybe um, um, challenges where if you don't achieve your goal, you lose money. So it's kind of like you put money into the pot. And if you don't achieve, maybe, for example, your sleep goal for the week, you lose the money or the money goes to a charity or something like that. You know? So there are so many things we're going to develop, but that's going to be within the community aspect. But we have plans for for exactly what you said. We have plans for it. Sounds really, really exciting. Um, there, there are many things that I see you are planning to do. Yeah. So, um, and I see you are also partnering for content providers and a couple more things. So get in touch with me so that we can share it with the whole community because I'm sure there will be yeah. tons of collaboration opportunities right there. Yeah, there will I be. see Bidemi somehow left. 
uh, so he probably lost his connection. But um, I really, really appreciate your time, Olu. Yeah. Also, yeah. Sami, who's here, uh, for inviting you over and, and for you for sharing uh, all your advancements and your insights with uh, live rhythms. Um, I think you can get in touch with Remy as well because he's uh, working on, um, you know, peak performance and, and I think that you guys can collaborate somehow. Uh, Remy, do you want to say anything? Okay, I don't know. You, you are not allowed to unmute yourself. But anyways, you can get in touch. So, uh, Remy? Okay, all good. So thank you so much, Olu. Uh, again for your time uh, and uh, please uh, stay in touch with us and there are so many opportunities we are going to we are going to upload this video to YouTube so uh, you know you can share it afterwards with who you need to share it anyways and thank you everyone for joining sorry for the five minutes you. Uh, you know extension you. but it was it was a great presentation have a thank great day much. everyone thank bye you. take care